Namaste, this is Chanel from Queen of Cups Healing. This reading features the Universal Goddess Tarot and the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle. Get ready to dive into Scorpio's depths and dance among Sagittarius' flames. I'm giving you a preview of what November has in store. Get ready to be yourself, be celebrated, and be the change you want to see. At this point, I invite you to pick the deck or crystal which resonates strongest for you. In the video description, you will find my link to URL connecting you to links for my tower reading and spiritual services and my Etsy store for healing crystals. You will also find timestamps for your chosen reading, which you can use to navigate the video. Thank you for joining me. Please like and share. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications for future readings. As always, love all and harm none. This includes yourself. Namaste, Amethyst Group. Thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is your November preview. We're going to explore the general theme and then areas of career, finance, relationships, romance, health, well-being. And then we're going to ask from a message from Spirit. So I do shuffle these cards beforehand. Um, I've never been a good shuffler. Every day I'm shuffling. Um, <laughs> but I always believe that the message from spirit comes through any way um, it can. So <clears throat> imagine if I had those like shuffling machines <laughs> as a tarot reader. <clears throat> okay, you guys. It's the end of the day, and uh, some of you that know me know that when I get tired, I get silly. So it's going to be a bumpy ride, but thank you for joining me. <clears throat> and uh, let's begin. Position number one is the theme of the month of November for my Amethyst group. Okay, so the theme here... And remember, I'm going to clarify. So one meaning might come through, and then a whole new meaning might like really materialize as we clarify. So we have two of cups energy. She is um, the cup holder, the Grecian god cup holder. Um, and she is about abundance. She is about coming together and community. And, um, <clears throat> and you'll notice from the uh, Hunter's Moon reading I did for a few of you, it really was a spirit of community that came up as secondary and tertiary energies. So here we have Two of Cups vibes. Let's see where that takes us thus far. Um, in the area of career, so this could, once again, let's rewind a little bit. This could mean um, abundance. This could mean generosity. This could mean support or partnership. So we have a lot of potential here. In the area of career, yes, three of pentacles, creating new wealth, creating residual income, um, creating creative projects, uh, you know, getting a little Etsy shop and selling your creative wares. Um, there is a projective energy here of building wealth. And it's not like you won the lottery kind of wealth, which we could all use. I mean, girl or boy or person. Um, but it is definitely like a creationary. I'm still, you guys, like making that a word. I will Google it and confirm or deny whether it is a word, but I'm still going to use it. Um, <laughs> we're still having like creationary wealth here. Um, but it's important to understand, you see the little dragon in the back, that there are some pitfalls here that still need to be get navigated potentially, but ultimately in the area of career, you are creating new wealth, you are creating new avenues of which to, um, to, ex to create a profession or derive a profession from it or derive income. And it's interesting because career and finance do go hand in hand. You notice I'm talking more about um, finance here, but just that's because it's the three of pentacles. But I think in your career, think about a side gig or for those of you who are creatives, think about um, what n new things you're creating. For some of you, it could mean that you're creating things in concert with others. Also something to think about. In the area of finance, this jumped out. So, okay, you guys, the picture is coming together. She is um, the goddess of creation. 
okay? These are all goddesses from myth and lore, and um, I wish I could remember all their names. I do, but <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, so I, I feel that here, I think these are the Pleiades. I'm not sure. Um, so here in the area of finance, there's creation energy, right? Creating something from nothing. And then in the area of career, there's creation energy, but more creation of collaboration. So you might think that you're creating, I feel like you could be creating new financial income through a spirit of either creativity, which could be the collaborative energy or in a group. Or you could be reaching out to your community to buy your creative wares. In the area of relationships, this does not mean romantic relationships. We're not there just yet. This is just relationships, friends, family, more intimate colleagues. I should do a fur baby. A fur baby position for people like me who just want to just chill with their fur babies. In the area of relationships, okay, here we have the Hermit card. So I do, excuse me, this is the Hierophant. So I do feel like there's this energy here of you taking a step back, of you gaining inner wisdom, or you observing those around you instead of engaging with those around you. So this could very much be the energy you're about to embark on, which is like kind of taking a step back and taking a look at everybody before you, before you engage with them. So this is something to, to think about. You guys, sometimes I just get shuffling and shuffling every day I'm shuffling um, in the area of romance. So in the area of relationships, to summarize, you're taking a step back, maybe observing a little bit or getting deeper with the people that you do love and trust. Um, but there's an energy here for this card in this deck of kind of taking a step back and could even suggest for some of you doing some ancestral work. In the area of romance, something has to be let go. This doesn't mean you're going to break up with your significant other. Don't panic. I know it's the Five of Cups. That can be a very daunting card. But I think that for um, the message for the collective is be willing to let go of old expectations, of things that are no longer serving you, of things that no longer fit the narrative, of limiting beliefs, of um, expectations you had when you first met. Sometimes people change and it doesn't mean they're duplicitous or lousy or, you know, need to be blasted on Twitter <laughs> in a, in a, a five-page uh, thread. Um, but it just means, like, let it be what it is now. And you see, like, she's still full of hope. Here she has her twins. She's looking back at, like, what was. She's been, the, the mythology behind this is that she's been ostracized, exiled from her community. But she still has her babies, her hope, her growth. And the thing is that she's still looking back on what was, not on the future of, of what she does have. And, you know, her arms are full. Her life is plentiful. <clears throat> Health and well-being. We're going to keep that together just because I'm no doctor. If you do, you know, connect with me for a Reiki reading, for an energy reading rather, or Reiki healing, I can tell you a little bit more about your specific health, mental, physical, spiritual, like the four bodies, but as the collective, we won't do that. We're just going to kind of get a general energy of health and well-being. If you are interested in that energy reading or energy healing, please go to www.qochealing.com. I, I also offer tower readings there. In the energy of health and well-being, I think that it would really benefit potentially your emotional or spiritual health to engage in some creative pursuits. As you know, we started off with the um, creative energy, creative energy, um, observe, observational energy, right? So I think that some creativity, if you're a creative, dive into <clears throat> your creativity. If you are um, not a creative, then explore different ways of being creative because we all deep down are, we're crea cre we are creators. Um, for some of you, this could mean expressing yourself emotionally in different ways. 
but now is the fun part. We get to clarify. So, <clears throat> the overall theme, first we got Hebe, the cupbearer. And now we have the two of, of wands. So this is a Toth-based deck. This is an issue of power. So it's about giving, receiving, and how this, this creates an interplay of personal power and empowerment. Um, because that's the... <clears throat> um, for the Toth deck, basically it means empower, personal power, control. So you have to really ask yourself, the overall theme is how do you empower yourself through the proper balance of giving and receiving, but also through engaging with your community in valuable ways for you and them. And then this is where this energy comes up here of, girl, you can't be jumping all over the place. We're trying to do something. <laughs> okay, cards are flying, but I think that's because I'm a bad shuffler. Um, then we have the creative energy in the area of career. So I feel like this is residual income vibes. And then see here, we have the Three of Cups energy. So I really do think for some of you, get together with your best Judies, kiki over some good ideas, and either sell them something because they want what you have, or, like not in a sketchy way like I feel like they've seen something maybe you make your own earrings and they're like girl I love those earrings make them some earrings they want to buy them or maybe together like maybe you wire wrap earrings and then your friend does this great clay making so together you can make like wire wrapped clay earrings so this is really for a lot of you I feel like this will be creating residual income by pairing up with a friend or a mutual creative for some of you, I feel like you have something to sell those you're close to or your community that could create residual income. Um, and for others in the area of career, I feel like there's going to be a project. If you like work in the more traditional nine to five, there could be a project that benefits from you getting several, you know, um, collaborators in on it. And for those of you who are entrepreneurs, think about how you can network or come together with a friend or um, a fellow entrepreneur to really increase your your reach or your capability, etc. <laughs> In the area of finance, we had the Eight of Pentacles, which was also very creationary. Um, and, okay. So here we have the five finance. I think the story here is that you got like blindsided or finances didn't go the way you wanted them to maybe last month or finances haven't gone the way you wanted to or maybe somebody took advantage of you in the more extreme iteration of the story that the cards are telling. Um, but ultimately, I think that this is how you recover by creating something new. This is your phoenix moment. Um, to rise from the ashes and create the finance you do want. So just remember, it's never too late to create something new. Maybe this last month was a little problematic. Um, you felt betrayed <clears throat> or you weren't being truthful with yourself about what your financial capability was. But this is your moment to create new and start fresh. Wipe the slate clean. Alright guys, you know I get like <laughs> type A straightening out cards sometimes. In the area of relationships, this is platonic relationships, I think that there is an issue of having to sit back and observe or maybe deep in connection, but this card will clear it all up. Yeah. In the area of relationships, I feel like there is an issue here. This is Lilith. But I think there's an issue here of you suspecting that dark things or duplicitous things are going on or happening. And I think that you don't feel totally at ease in the situation or you feel like there's some shadow energy that you can't touch in one or more of your, of your relationships, your platonic relationships. My advice to you is to stay, take a step back and like really observe what is going on. What are the energies at work? What are the... Um, what are the energies at the four? So, you know, the, the surface energies, but also meditate or reflect on what are the, um, <clears throat> the background energies here. Because I think you don't feel good in this situation. You feel a little off. And 
like you feel like there's more to, than meets the eye and it's okay to take a step back and kind of figure about Ooh, I'm getting a kind of hint from spirit from my guide saying that it's okay for you to take a step back if a situation feels icky or oddly familiar and say to yourself how is this repeating itself from a past life how is this repeating itself from um, <clears throat> from a past life how is this repeating itself from a parallel existence and what is the wisdom in it in order to bring universal and temporal or infinite temporal continuity right by the way guys just because I don't advertise it on my website uh, I'll let you know I do do past life regressions um, I do past life regressions and I do past life healings as part of the energy healing so um, contact me if that's what you're interested in at www.qlchealing.com. Okay, in the area of romance, you're being asked to let something go. And I feel like this is about being receptive. Maybe you're not letting somebody um, love you in a new way. Maybe you're not letting somebody... Um, open themselves to you or you're not open to somebody no no I'll rephrase that I feel that the T is the T is you are not as open to somebody in your romantic situation or to romantic romance as you could be because you're focused on the past so if you're partnered up this could mean that you're not open to their romance because of past expectations that were not met or past situations that were unserving and if you're single and this could be that you're not open to romance in general because you're focused on what happened in the past let it go heal it don't just let it go heal it heal it okay in the area of health and well-being we had a lot of watery energy but also creativity um so let's see what this what picture this makes Yeah, I do think that this is an inward journey. Okay, this is the knave. Um, I do feel like this is an inward journey that you're being asked to take to explore the treasures within. So that could be your creative outlets. That could be your spiritual gifts. That could be, sorry for the glare, guys. These, some cards react differently to the light. So this could be your creative gifts. This could be your um, psychic gifts. Um, or your emotional fount of just love and compassion and healing. But either way, there's treasures inside that you're being asked to explore. Um, so I would feel like this, the health and well-being right now centers on an inner exploratory. Not the kind that makes you take go lightly. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I had to. I had to. I had to. I'm sorry. I apologize. I won't edit it out, though, so am I really sorry? Um, okay, I'm shuffling for no reason. I made myself awkward. That's my punishment. Okay, uh, <laughs> the theme here is creating power through giving and receiving. And I think this is very deeply relational, this spread, okay? It's about creating power and empowering through giving and receiving. And then the first thing, this the, the career has to do with how you can create income with a community how you can serve the community but it's definitely like a residual income a side gig kind of thing and it has to do with creativity so ask yourself how can you generate wealth either with a friend or by selling your wares to people that you trust or who know you who have expressed an interest in what you have um, so this in the area of career try new ideas talk to people collaborate um, and serve the community because I get the distinct feeling they you have something they want. I got, I got, I got what you need. <laughs> um, in the area of finance, you you got you you got the short end of the stick, okay? Uh, at some point, or you may be getting the short end of the stick. E -e. Okay, but it's important to remember that you can create change at any moment. Hit the reset button. And I think that this month is all about hitting the reset button in order to generate the financial change you want to 
generate and come back from a little bit of financial crisis. Once again, the ability to give and receive to create empowerment. This is the pervasive energy. And then here, there's something either past life karmic or in the present life. It could be something repeating from this life, from childhood or the past. But either way, there's some toxic cycles or chronic cycles here that you're being asked to examine, take a step back from in order to, to heal, in order to find your empowerment, in order to learn to give and receive again, and who you don't want nothing from. Like, I say give and receive, but sometimes it's just like block it, award it, you know, cast a circle with salt, with black salt, just do it. So, um, but either way, you're being asked to examine some patterns here that are taking away from your ability to give and receive. Um, and empower yourself. In the area of romance, we have um, some receptivity and issues of receptivity that are being blocked by your. I don't. I don't mean to call you out. I'm not targeting you, but being blocked by um, being stuck in the past or limited beliefs or focus on what was or what happened or how they hurt you or how you were hurt. So either way, whether you're partnered up or single and loving it, just be receptive to to being cared for um, and that will help heal, but it will also necessitate a bit of healing from the past. And then in the area of health and well-being, go in, in, in. Um, you might want to take some ritual baths, some ritual showers. Um, here we call them the Swedish spa, but it's basically like going in the hot tub, going in the ice pond or the ice pool. Um, you might want to work with water a little bit. Um, but ultimately, I feel for the collective, the message is that you have treasures within um, that could be creative. Creative spiritual or emotional that you can really share and it's time to really nurture and potentially express but in this layout it's not so much about sharing them with others it's really about celebrating um, yourself and you okay angels guides and ascended masters what is the collective message you have for the amethyst group Please allow me to communicate it in a way that's healing and complete. It fell out. It fell out, girl. We got to take it. Um, be your own first priority. And I can see that, right? So it's about painting the, the castles in your sky. It's about making yourself a priority. It's about honoring your dreams. It's about manifesting your dreams. And see, it's all about giving, receiving, and self-love. This is what Hebe could be here for, the cup bearer. I kept calling it the two of cups. I apologize. It is the knave of cups. Um, but she's um, giving and receiving. So the energy here is uh, the ability to give and receive um, to empower. So this is what it's saying. Be your own first priority. So when you're in the act of giving and receiving, whether cre uh, through career to create residual income or additional income or serve the community or collaborate with friends, whether it is here in which you're coming back from a betrayal, financial betrayal, whether it's here in which painful or chronic toxic cycles are repeating themselves, whether it is here in which you need to release the past in order to be loved again or be open to love, or whether it's here, whether you're doing a deep dive in yourself, you can't see me at all, but I'm just recapping. Uh, I'm just recapping the message or whether it is in the area of health or wellness where you are go doing a deep dive within yourself it's always about making yourself a priority and it's about um, loving yourself first yes so that this will all fall into place the rest of the message will fall into place this piece of agate just caught my eye I'd love don't fall I'd love this agate for you, this pink agate, what they call banded agate or pink Botswana agate. Red tourmaline just fell on the floor because it just couldn't handle all that energy. Um, or some rhodonite because I think you need grounding. This is an issue of balance. It's interesting that we've put um, 
Libra season behind us, but we still need balance. Um, and maybe some of you are missing the balance of Libra season a little bit. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. We'll work it out, guys. Um, okay. This month, I'm available for soulful chats and readings on November 1st on IG. And that's Instagram at 1 p.m. Eastern. Same bat time, same, maybe not same bat channel, same bat time, different channel. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern on Clubhouse at 8, um, on October, eh, girl, on November 8th and November 15th. So did you get that? Instagram live on the 1st and um, Clubhouse on the 8th and the 15th. And the links for everything are in the video description. So please reach out to me before, during, or after those times so that we can get to know each other, have a little kiki, spill the tea. Also, you guys, if you enjoyed this reading, um, in my link tree bio, there's like a little tip that you can give me to say like, keep up the good work, but I'd be really happy with just if you said hello. I'd appreciate that. Um, so I hope to see you at one of the lives. Um, with every reading, I send out a little love and light and namaste energy. Here it comes. I sincerely hope you receive it today. And I look forward to seeing you um, around the time of the full moon, um, which should be around like the 17th. Don't hold me to that. Um, <laughs> it's going to be around the, the uh, second or third week of November. Okay, guys, I hope to see you then. Thanks for joining me. Namaste. Namaste, Labrador Group. Thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned in the introduction, that's my old chair. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is your reading for November. It's your November preview. Gosh, we got the Scorpio vibes. We got the Sagittarius vibes. Um, and that really played out in the last reading because we had Hebe, the cupbearer, but we also had um, an Iroquois goddess with her fire, with her two of wands fire. So, um, yeah, let's see if we can create the same magic. Well, it won't be the same magic, but it'll be magical nonetheless. I do shuffle these beforehand because that's what's up. Um... <laughs> And let's begin. So we're just going to, like, all the time, we're going to explore theme, uh, career, uh, finance, relationships, romance, health, well-being, and then we'll give you a message from spirit. Okay, position number one, we're going to pull it from the top card. Okay, here we have the King of Swords. And the thing about her energy is that it's about striking a balance. Um, striking a balance, living in truth, living in reality, um, and not being overly in fantasy, but not being overly pragmatic either. Like, we're supposed to have a little bit of fun too. Um, but she's very much about truth. She is a goddess of truth and authenticity. And we're going to clarify, we're going to come back and clarify, it could give a whole new meaning. Right now, the theme is one of authenticity and clarity. In the area of career, you're a little stuck. We got the hangman energy. So you're, you're thinking about some things, you're processing some things. Um, you will understand the assignment, but you're just not ready to hand it in just yet. Um, it, this is the energy of like the hanged man so you're waiting to see but it's an issue of balance too as you notice here by the kitty cats black and white this balance here in the area of finance We have the Ace of Wands, which is passion, progression, development. So it's interesting that you feel kind of stuck in career, but there's a projective energy in the area of finance, which is kind of nice and interesting. And because it's an area of balance, perhaps that's where you strike the balance. Financial growth, but it could necessitate a little bit of um, a career pause. In the area of relationships here... We have the Four of Wands, which is a sense of peacemaking, community, honor. Um, it is a sense of well-being and peace and harmony, harmonious energy. This is for your platonic relationships, so close co-workers, friends, family. 
in the area of romance, here's the thing, like you either want to know about it or you couldn't care less. Is there ever a happy medium? I don't know. Maybe I'm projecting. I'm totally projecting. I'm totally projecting. Um, in the area of romance, we have the emperor. We're setting good boundaries. Yes. Yes to the boundaries. I love this. We're setting healing, healthy boundaries. So this is great. Um, and we're manifesting. We're, we're, we're talking the talk and we're walking the walk. This is what this badass says to me. I believe this is Athena and this is what this badass says to me. In the area of health and well-being, by the way guys, if you want an energy reading either about mind, body, um, heart, or soul, you can contact me at www.qochealing.com. I do energy readings and energy healings. Okay. In the area of health and well-being, maybe a little time in nature would do well. Um, I also feel like some grounding energy exercises would be really great. Um, I think that with this autumnal vibes, this is the Knight of Pentacles. You're being asked to be more generous of spirit, but also to slow down a little bit with yourself, to open yourself, to rest, relax before, or to... Uh, foster rejuvenation um, for those of you who love horseback riding like I do maybe this little this guy is a sign to go horseback riding but I do feel like a lot of you should um, be more generous with your time slow down slow down all right in the area of um, in the theme of November we got this king of swords vibe which is like all about battle Girl, I was just saying that. Or boy or person. I was just saying this, right? So now we have temperance and the king of swords. Which is all about, in this deck, it's all about alignment, authenticity, truth. And in this case, it's about how being honest with yourself can manifest the balance you need. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Authenticity mm, and truth manifesting balance. That alignment. You see that alignment that goes right down the king? Boom. Right down the middle. And a coming together of the shadow and light. What would I summarize that as a theme of? I would say it's a theme of um, alignment through truth. And harmony through truth. In the area of career, we have the hanged man, but I think that you're being asked to take a pause for the cause because something has to come to the forefront. Something has to be revealed. So just hold fast, guys. Hold back. Hold. Hold. It's coming. I trust me, it's coming. Um, so just hold back and wait for answers to come. They are coming, okay? So don't make too many crazy moves. Um, don't make too many, like... Um, don't do too many offensive, not offensive, like, don't be offensive, like, offense, you know? Don't, don't play offense right now. In the area of finance, we have the Ace of Wands, but I think that at the same time, because we have the Seven of Swords, things are not as they appear. One way or the other, I think that you're ready for a new start. I feel like you're feeling passionate and driven and ready to go. Um, but still, and see how these are mirroring each other, the two sevens, which is the card of illusion and, and uh, revelation. Okay, so either way, career, you're being asked to pause because things aren't as they appear and answers are coming. And then the area of finance, you're being asked to pause your plans because even though you're go, 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 you're ready to go, or you may have an offer to go, 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 pause your plans because something is... An illusion not everything is as it seems in the area of relationships we have peacemaking we have happiness we have good times good vibrations um, we have uh, harmony and homecoming and we also have a, a sense of harmony homecoming and um, and lightheartedness like celebration and so this sun card 
doubles down on that energy. I think in the area of relationships, you're sitting pretty. This is friends, family, or intimate coworkers. I think you're sitting pretty. Maybe somebody asked for forgiveness. Maybe you feel like forgiving. Whatever it is, the vibe is good. It's positive. Build on that. I have no advice for that. It's good. It's nice. Enjoy the nice things. Um, <laughs> but it's just a good vibe. I think that you're vibing. I think for Americans, it's going to be Thanksgiving soon. I'm not sure. I think so. Um, the holidays are coming for those of you who celebrate. Um, for those of you who are not for Thanksgiving, I totally understand that. Um, but it's still a time of coming together, you know, so it's a good energy. That's all I have to say about that. Don't mess with a good thing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. In the area of romance, hmm, your boundaries are going to let you welcome somebody in. Or your boundaries are going to make you feel maybe more sensual, more generous of spirit, more loving, more caring, more ooey gooey good. Um, you're going to express and enjoy and share your soft, melty center. Because boundaries, what? You guys, say it together. Boundaries teach people how to love us. Um, and that's what you're doing. You're putting up good boundaries. So you put yourself in a position of security in order to be loved and loved. You guys, in the area of relationships, both platonic and romantic, you're sitting pretty this month. You are. But do the work of forgiveness, four of wands, and do the work of setting good boundaries, emperor. In the area of health and well-being, we have an energy, yeah, take time to reflect. Um, take time to slow down. She gives me crone energy, like m maiden mother crone. She gives me crone energy. Um, I believe this is Morrigan, um, if I remember the deck uh, guidebook correctly. But either way, it's the world card, right? So it's about bringing things to fruition. You might want to do some nice yoga poses. You might want to do... Um, a healing or a cleansing um, whatever it is slow down take time for reflection take time for healing I really feel like this denotes time in nature um, or time with animal familiars or animal friends that could be really nurturing to you if that's your vibe um, but yeah take time to slow down that crone energy tells me it's time to slow down and the autumnal autumnal the fall energy tells me it's time to slow down okay angels guides and ascended masters i ask for a message for the collective that you would have them convey please allow me and enable me and empower me to convey it in a way that's healing and whole you never needed those wings to fly Somebody's trying to, like, perhaps write a narrative about you, or somebody is trying to, or somehow you fell into a false narrative about who you are. Remember, we talked about illusions here and illusions here. Okay, and um, the energy of forgiveness here, and you're being asked to be your most authentic self, remember, to bring balance, remember? So this is about being your own hero. It's about writing your own narrative. You never needed those wings to fly. So set yourself free from limiting beliefs, from fakery, from, from pantomiming through life. Listen, I used to do it all the time. Sometimes I find myself doing it, guys. It's the truth. And I have to catch myself and go, what is this performance and how is it serving me? Do that. Really do that. Because sometimes we put on a brave face because we're victims of trauma or we don't want to hurt people. We don't want to burden people. Um, but trust that you, see, you never needed those wings to fly. Trust that you can set yourself free from the limitations of inauthenticity. That's what I'll summarize on. Set yourself free from the limitations of inauthenticity. Be you. If they don't dig it, they don't pay your bills, so they don't matter. Right? Spoken from a Taurus. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm going to give you, um, yeah, for truth, I'm always going to go to my Amazonite. I'm always going to give you guys Amazonite. But you might benefit from some aquamarine as well because it's very, like, I, I like the energy for transmutation, for peace, for calm. Both of these are great for that. 
for transmutation, for peace, for calm, for balance, for truth. That's what you guys need right now. It's like, you're amazing as you are. You just have to now share it with everybody. And if they don't get it, they don't get you. And then, you know, they don't matter. You guys, quick summary. Um, on November 1st, I will be on Instagram. On November 8th and 15th, I will be on Clubhouse. The links for both my accounts are available in the description below. And across the board, it's all 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, you can always connect with me at www.qochealing.com for a bunch of stuff. I do everything. If you need it, and it's in the energy of intuitive readings, Reiki, energy healing, or life coaching, I do it. I know I promised you guys I'd come with the life coaching stuff, but I really want to perfect my presentation. If there's any web designers out there or website designers, please send me a message. Uh, potentially we'll collaborate. Above all, send me a message to say hi. If you really love this reading, please leave me a tip through my link tree. It is the first link available. You can leave me a tip just to say thank you. But really, I appreciate you just reaching out. That's often thanks enough. Um, so thanks very much for joining me, you guys. With every reading, I send out a little love and light and namaste energy incoming. Do -do -do -do. I sincerely hope you receive it today, and I look forward to seeing you either the second or third week of November for your full moon reading. Namaste, guys. Namaste, Malachi group. Thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is your reading for the month of November. I see your little preview. We're going to jump into areas of the general energy, career, finance, relationships, <clears throat> romance, health, well-being, and then a message from spirit. I do shuffle these cards beforehand, um, but uh, we're going to do it again. Uh, <laughs> uh, so as I'm shuffling, just know that on November 1st, I will be available on Instagram Live. On November 18th and 15th, that will be on Clubhouse. The links to my accounts are in the description. And um, they're all at 1 p.m. Eastern. So there's some high priestess vibes for the month ahead. That could really be that Scorpio season energy that we're already in. Uh, and I do feel like that's the energy of mystery, magic, healing, intuition, understanding. Um, the high priestess is is everything she's every light worker she's every healer um she embodies it all she is the epitome of the divine feminine well her and the empress might fight for that role in the tarot deck but um yeah in the area of career you have the magi the magician you're you're in control you are rocking your world you're in control you have the power to create change I do feel like you're manifesting change also because this is Demeter, okay? So she's saying you have the ability to manifest change and to reap your harvest, but of course in true Demeter spirit on your own terms. In the area of finance, we have the Four of Cups. So it's enough, but like is it enough? I think that's the energy you're getting there. It's like you have enough, but you could definitely... Or you may feel like you could definitely stand to have more. So it's a little bit of apathy. Like you're over your situation. You're looking to expand. You're looking to grow. You want change. Um, but Demeter is here in the area of career saying, girl, I got you. <laughs> in the area of platonic relationships, <clears throat> you have a tower moment. Egads. Um, tower moments are bad. It's a situation of upheaval, change, um, transmutation. Um, yeah, this card's pretty intense, but um, we're going to clarify, first of all. And second of all, change is not bad. It's just, a ch uh, like I always say, change is uncomfortable. Staying the same is painful. There's a difference. And the Tower card basically speaks to the discomfort of change because it causes a little chaos, gets us all up in our feelings, gets us stressed out. In the area of romance, we have the Empress. I knew the High Priestess would call her out. She's like, girl, where are you at? She's like, I'm here. Um, <laughs> um, so it's about really love, togetherness, compassion, giving. I think giving and receiving 
um, but you will feel very nurtured and loved or have opportunities to make others feel nurtured and loved. The snakes here on her wrist represent a spirit of change. So I do feel like this is, this. sometimes how I read tarot is I pick up on little cues that catch my attention at the time. So I feel for the Malachite group this month, it is a changing spirit given the snakes there. In the area of health and romance, we have the Ace of Water. You might enjoy some water rituals, some water time, going to what we call a Swedish spa here. I don't know if they call it that in Sweden. <laughs> you know, like where they call it Canadian ham in Canada, but like we just call it, um, I, I forget the word, but we don't call it Canadian ham. Um, Canadian bacon, yeah. All right, I'm off on a tangent again. So this is emotional. It's emotional and it's in the water realm. So it could entail feeling better because you're near water. It could entail feeling better because due to emotional release. So we have the High Priestess to start. We're going to get into our clarification now. We have the High Priestess to start. And then we have the Three of Wands. So it's definitely about community coming together. But I think that you're really being charged to come together with spiritual people. Like-minded people. I think you're being encouraged to create a spirit of collaboration and unity. Or maybe unity within yourself. Aligning the shadow and the light. The spiritual with the material. Aligning the four bodies, mind, body, heart, and soul. It's really a spirit of alignment, which came up also in the previous readings. In the area of um, career, we had Demeter, the magician. And here we have the king, excuse me, the queen of wands. So the energy, I always say that because in this deck, they're both, uh, both kings and queens are feminine. So I do feel like this is a spirit of leaving an unserving past behind and manifesting a career, career choices, career changes, career outcomes um, on your own terms, leaving the BS in the background. See, this pagoda is like burning, um, but Demeter's in control. And this grandmotherly lady is saying, I got you. Don't worry. In the area of finance, you're a little bit dissatisfied. That's okay. It's normal. Sometimes that can be the greatest catalyst for change. But I think that you know, the reminder here with the Ten of Wands is that, yeah, you're not satisfied, but you're bouncing back from something. Or you could be gearing up for something bigger and something better. So even though you're disenchanted right now, know that you're gearing up for something better. It's a healing process or a pause and wait process before you can really amp things up and take it to the next level. In the area of platonic relationships, we got the dreaded tower card. I only say dreaded because I'm kind of teasing you guys. Tower card is not that bad. But what did I tell y'all? Um, <laughs> we, we get balance after that. We get the four of pentacles. We find alignment again. We find balance again. So whatever kind of tea or drama, some tea is spill or drama or whoever gets messy during American Thanksgiving, if that's what you celebrate, I get it if you don't, um, then just know that it's going to recalibrate and you will find the balance again. You will find the peace again. So don't worry. Let auntie get messy at Thanksgiving dinner. So let auntie wow out. Let uncle have a few... <laughs> But know that whatever chaos stirs up is going to go back to normal, okay? In the area of romance, we have the Empress card. Um, <clears throat> but we also have the Knight of Swords. So this is an energy of needing to push forward, create space, talk it out, be authentic, be honest. Leave negativity in the back so you can create space for vulnerability, sensitivity, love, compassion. Now, if you're single, um, same same thing applies. Um, leave negativity in the past. Um, clear your mind, clear your spirit, clear your aura so that you create a safe, almost fortress. You see, she's like wrapped up in her vibe and her little den. Create a safe space for you to be vulnerable. 
but I feel for those of you who are in relationship, um, that opportunity will present itself. And for those of you who are not, think about ways that you can do that, even if it's for yourself. Create a safe space to nurture and honor yourself so that you're better aligned with the resonance of love. The law of attraction dictates when we vibrate at a certain frequency, we will attract it. So if you want love, know that if you generate a sense of self-love, you will attract it. And in the area of um, health and well-being, we have the Ace of Swords, but we also have the Six of Swords. So I feel like you're being encouraged to do some release work, some transmutation. You might want to contact me at www.qochealing.com for an energy clearing. Um, because we're leaving limiting beliefs, negative energy... We're leaving all the junk in the past in the past. You know, we don't recycle it in this case, even though we think green now. It's 2021, we think green, but in terms of negative energy, we don't recycle it. We throw it in the trash. Well, we could compost it because essentially that would be letting it break down and become something new <laughs> and healing for the world. So compost, composting does work. Okay. So in the area of the theme, it's about alignment through coming together, through harmony and collaboration of the self. Um, it's about projective energy as well, but let's focus on the alignment first, the, the collaborative energy within yourself. Um, in the area of career, it's about letting whatever's in the past that's not serving you go and doing things, manifesting change, growth from a place of control and your own terms. In the area of finance, I know you're not loving the vibe, but this is either a recuperation period after a difficult time or in turn it could be a pause before a really great and abundant time or it could be both, manifest the best. In the area of relationships, somebody's going to act a little pocket. There's going to be a lot of change and chaos and upheaval. I don't want to say chaos, but it's going to be like upheaval energy. But know that the balance will be restored. Maybe you'll be the balance. Be the balance you want to see in the world. Um, in the area of romance, you're creating, uh, re, you know, we'll even say fighting for, in a healing sense, space in order to be vulnerable. Okay, you're creating or you're fighting for space in order to be vulnerable, whether that means in a relationship or a single wanting to attract love. Create that space, protect it, and, um, and transmute it. And then in the area of health or well-being, some release work is at hand so that you leave the past in the past. Clarify, purify, cleanse. You might want to do a ritual shower, ritual bath. If you have water nearby, go dunk yourself in a body of water, unless it's like, unless you, um, it's cold as heck, don't do that. But, um, well, you could, kind of polar bear style, but um, it, really you're transmuting so that you can move forward because this is, once again, all about alignment and coming together. What we're going to do, we're going to pick a card from Spirit in order to... We're going to pick up a card from Spirit in order to bring the whole thing together. Angels and ancestors, we ask that you come together to deliver the collective message from the Malachi group. Please help me to deliver it in a healing, holistic way. Yeah, start a revolution. And I think that the revolution starts from within. It's really about empowering yourself that admits the chaos, admits the negativity, admits the changes. Um, you are starting fresh. You are starting new. You're creating change within yourself so you can create change in the universe, in the world, in your community, in your family, in your home, and then back to yourself. See how it's cyclical? So it's about creating alignment with yourself first um, so that you can go out and change the world. Um, be the change you want to see in the world. That's the quote I will leave you with. Be the change you want to see in the world. Manifest the peace in the world. Manifest within the peace you want to see in the world. There's a lot of crazy things happening right time now. There's a lot of crazy things happening right now. That's a conversation for a different day. But know that you can bring a spirit of peace, a spirit of transformation, and a spirit of healing to the world by first fostering it within yourself. 
I think for like alignment, I want you to get some rainbow fluorite, some moonstone, some rainbow moonstone. Um, and you might even want to play with the crystals like rose quartz um, for that spirit of alignment. You might also have some transmuting work to do, so you know what to do. You need those dark stones, smoky quartz, black tourmaline to transmute whatever you need to transmute. But ultimately focus on the higher perspective, on the alignment, universal alignment, community alignment, alignment with, with source, with love, with healing, so you can manifest the best. Um, you guys, if you really enjoyed this reading, Please send me a little tip through my Linktree link. I'll put the description, the link in the description below. Um, or just say hi. That is plenty of thanks often. It's just for you to introduce yourself and say hi to me so we can connect. You guys, with every reading, I send out a little love and light and namaste energy. I sincerely hope you receive it today. And I look forward to seeing you either the second or third week of November for the full moon reading. Namaste, guys.